Minasan konnichiwa, Ali des. So today's video has actually been pre-recorded last year in August 2022, just before we moved from Singapore to Japan. And I meant to discard all of my N3 resources at the time, especially the textbooks. They were taking so much space and they were so heavy, I didn't want to carry them with me to Japan. So I pre-shot the video back then and I'm only just editing it now and finally uploading it on my channel so i hope you guys are excited for today's video the first video i did on this series of all the resources i used to study japanese was on n5 and n4 levels it's currently my most viewed video on my channel and i understand why because i think it's very valuable insight that i'm giving you and i hope that this video will also give you valuable insight so thank you again for tuning into my channel let's get on with the video don't forget to hit the thumbs up button hi guys and welcome back to my channel you guys know i'm moving to japan soon and there is no way i can take with me all my old japanese resources they're way too heavy and they take way too much space in this video, I will share with you 100% of all the resources I have used while I was studying for the level N3 of the JLPT. So for the people in the back, JLPT stands for Japanese Language Proficiency Test. And I studied for this particular level between November 2019 until around late August 2020. All right, so as usual, I'll go through all the resources I've used in order and we will divide them by categories. So we'll cover grammar, kanji, vocab, reading comprehension, listening comprehension and others. Okay, let's go with the grammar resources first. So first of all, I used the Bumpo app. So this is what the Bumpo app looks like on Android, all level N3. There are 15 chapters containing the lessons on all the grammar points you need to learn for level N3. I am quickly going to show you the notes I took at the time. This is a Mujirushi notebook. This was plain and I decorated it with this postcard level N3 and specifically with the 15 categories of the Bumpo app, these are the notes I took. As you can see, I was taking a lot of things in notes and basically almost all the information about the grammar point itself. And then I was pretty much copying all the interesting example sentences I could find on the app. So yeah, I wouldn't recommend you do the same. Honestly, you can access the grammar points and their explanations and example sentences anytime you want if you have the app. So unless you need it to memorize stuff, in which case then I would advise you to do it as well. But other than that, yeah, I don't really recommend you do the same. At the end of my notes i also did a recap for level n3 recap this is what it looks like so a recap of all the grammar points right each grammar point with only one example sentence this is the format i would advise you to keep if you really want to take notes of anything but remember that you will always have access to the app anyway especially if you purchase a lifetime subscription like i did so you really don't need to spend that much time taking notes of everything in my opinion so yeah i did change my mind about it and actually i made a whole video about this subject of taking notes right here if you're interested and once i was done with the bumpo app i also went through the n3 grammar playlist on the nihongo no mori youtube channel so there are three resources on their youtube channel I actually discovered the Nihongo no Mori YouTube channel quite a while back, probably in 2019, but I could only start using it once I was level N3. This is because the resources they have on their channel actually range from level N3 to level N1 only. So this is what the grammar lessons look like. They are a bit old school, yes, but it doesn't matter because the professor is actually a Japanese teacher and he was the original creator of this whole channel. Now you may know that they're very successful. They also have an app 
but this is part of their free resources still available on their channel. You can enjoy all the grammar lessons for free for level N3. So yes, the production is, as I said, a bit old school, but you know what? It doesn't matter because the actual resource is a gem. I loved going through these videos at the time. The teacher speaks very slowly and since I had trouble understanding any spoken Japanese at the time, it was perfect for me for my level. It really eased my way into listening comprehension. Right, so here are the notes I took uh, while watching the videos from Nihongo no Mori. Actually, I also made a mistake here, as you can see. <laughs> Nihon no Mori instead of Nihongo no Mori anyway. So I took again some notes about the grammar points that were presented by the Nihongo no Mori channel. And as you can see, these are a lot less than the previous ones I took from the Bumpo app. And this is because at that time I started to realize that it was not actually benefiting me that much to take that many notes. So I was, you know, keeping them short, sweet and short, and just so I could remember what was actually covered during the lesson. Lessons. So that's pretty much it. These are all the notes I took from the lessons on the Nihongo no Mori channel. After that for grammar, I also went through the TRI. The TRI series is a collection of exercise books for Japanese grammar from level N5 to N1 of the JLPT. Loved it so much that I also used the N2 and the N1 version of the book. I used the grammar section of the Nihongo Go Hyakumon N3. This is a prep book for the JLPT where you get kanji questions as well as vocab questions and also grammar questions. You have one page with the quiz and the page right behind it are the explanations about the correct answers for the quiz. This section of the video is kindly sponsored by the Pumpo app. You guys will have noticed this is my first ever sponsorship on YouTube and I'm guessing you will not be surprised that it is for the Bumpo app. I have been raving about this app for years now. I've been going on and on about how wonderful it is. So when they contacted me to talk about their app, you guys can easily guess what I said. The Bumpo app is a language app designed to learn and study grammar. Bumpo means grammar in Japanese. The app was originally only offered Japanese grammar lessons. I have used it myself since 2019. Since that time, I have actually finished all the contents of the app for Japanese grammar, all the way from N5 level to N1 level. Yes, when I lack something, I go extra. Anyway, the Bumpo app is available on both iOS and Android. I have used it mostly on its Android version myself, but since I now have an iPhone, here is what the app looks like on iOS and specifically the Japanese course. Grammar lessons are divided per level of the GLPT. The lessons are then divided per category, grouping the sentence structures which are similar to each other, which, let me tell you, is very useful when you start going into N3 to N1 levels because there are a lot of similar grammar points and the categories help a lot. The lessons themselves have explanations on the grammar point in English, example sentences along the way with very cute illustrations and finally an exercise section where you are prompted to use the grammar point making your own sentences with it. For the Japanese course only there are 1800 example sentences and 8000 quiz questions. Once you're done with a lesson all quizzes with phrases from that particular lesson will appear in the review tab so that you can quiz yourself for hours on end until the sentence patterns you learned stick. I certainly am not the only one loving this app. It has 1 million downloads on the Play Store with a rating of 4.8 out of 5 from more than 50,000 reviews and a rating of 4.9 on the App Store. Bumpo now has new languages, Spanish, French, German, Korean, Chinese, Italian and Portuguese grammar. Whew. That's right guys, the app is free to try out. And if you find that you like the method used to teach grammar, there are also multiple kinds of subscriptions you can purchase to get full access to the lessons. In fact, I had purchased a lifetime subscription myself back in 2019. Apart from new language courses, Bumpu now also has a platinum version of the app, which includes a dialogue tab to help you immerse in Japanese, an AI chat to perfect your sentence making skills, 
and a snap functionality to take a picture of any kanji or sentence to get the app to recognize it and explain it to you. So once again, thanks to Bumpo for trusting me to talk about their amazing app and now let's go back to the video. For kanji, I use the app Kanji Tree on Android. Here is what the Kanji Tree app looks like. You have recognition, reading and writing exercises for kanji, categorized per level of the GLPT. It is a great app. I actually talk to you more about it in this video if you're interested. The Somatome for M3 kanji, for which I actually did a flip through of my notes in this video right here. Here's what the Somatome textbook looks like. You have one page for the presentation of each kanji with their vocab words, one page of exercise. You have this pattern on every double page. I love the layout, the index at the end, and overall this whole textbook. I briefly use the Wanikani website. And I use the Tobira textbook, but for kanji. So it's not exactly a textbook, it's more an exercise book, a practice book. Kitai yo kanji ryoku. And it covers 800 kanji. This exercise book was an absolute dream to use. It took me over six months to finish everything, but it was so worth it. It contains lots and lots of exercises covering all the kanji that show up in the Tobira main textbook. It was a great gateway to both immersion practice and more advanced textbooks such as the Shinkansen Master. For vocab now, I use the N3 Tango 2000. This series of book is published by the same company as the Somatome. It is Ask Publishing. They are basic vocab books with lots of vocab words per category and corresponding example sentences. Then I use the vocab section of the Nihongo Go Hyakumon and free to practice my vocab. At that time, I was actually still using the JapaneseClass.jp website, which I mentioned in my video about N5 and N4 resources recently. I also went through the N3 vocab playlist on the Nihongo no Mori YouTube channel. So there are three resources on their YouTube channel. And I also use the Somatome for vocab. The Somatome for vocab is pretty much in the same layout as the Somatome for kanji. You have the left page dedicated to the new vocab words you need to learn and the right page dedicated to exercises with these vocab words, which are both a great preparation for immersion practice and the GLPT exercise section. For reading comprehension, I specifically use the Somatome for GLPT focused reading comprehension. The Somatome for reading comprehension was an absolute joy to use once again. It was both a great preparation for immersion practice once again and also the GLPT reading section. I love the layout just like the other books and it helped me get a big boost of confidence in my reading abilities. I also read a lot of the Nihongo day by day blog articles and basically uh, this blog blog is written, I'm not sure whether she's still posting, but basically it's written by a Japanese teacher and sometimes she made posts about particular grammar points and they were around my level at that time or, you know, specific nuances between vocab words, for example. So very, very useful blog course written all in Japanese, so very good reading practice. I also read a ton of books at that time, but I will talk about it more in future videos. For listening practice now, if you've been following me for a while, you know that right after the speaking practice, the listening comprehension part of my studies was the most difficult for me. So for listening, it's really when I reached round and three level that I really started taking it seriously. So I did a lot of podcast listening. So I was listening to two podcasts in particular, a small talk in Japanese podcast. For the small talk one, basically, it's with this one that I started transcription practice. 
So basically, what you do is you listen to something, so anything. In my case, it was podcast. You listen to the podcast, for example, and basically write everything you can understand. The whole thing is, of course, at first to try and make sure you distinguish every sentences, where where to stop the sentences. It was taking me an awfully long time at first because it was the first time I was actually doing active listening. An episode of around 15 to 20 minutes was taking me six hours or more to transcribe but it was a fantastic practice i really recommend this excuse the quality of the video i took this a while ago many many years ago but basically here is my notebook i don't own this anymore i actually threw it away and you can see here that i was transcribing whatever i was hearing from the podcast trying to understand who was talking from each of the two girls. I was mainly writing in hiragana and katakana because I didn't know how to write the kanji at the time and I couldn't whip out my dictionary. There were many many places where I just didn't write anything, leaving space for me to write the words afterwards and after I was done with the listening practice and the transcription practice, I would check everything with the transcriptions they had available for free on their website and then create a list of all the important vocab words that were mentioned in the podcast episode using the color code I was referring to back then. And the Hapa Eikaiwa podcast. I am E. to tsurareru to dokoka de yumimashita. His mother is African American and his father is Vietnamese. Robert は自分のアイデンティティは二つの民族背景から来ていると話します。It's also around that time that I started listening to the news every morning and I talk about this in this video. It's actually all I did because I, I didn't buy a specific resource focused on the listening section of the GLPT for N3. Right now for the others category, I want to say the main resource I used for N3 is Tobira, the Tobira textbook, so Jokue no Tobira. And for this textbook, uh, which I reviewed in full in this video right here, you know, I couldn't place it in the other categories above just because it covers at least three categories it covers grammar, vocab, and reading practice. And it was a great resource for me. I also used Quizlet quite a lot actually. On decks, I would create out of the Tobira textbook. So I had decks for grammar, verbs, and adverbs specifically. Also, you know, just to mention, it was around the time I was finishing my entry studies, so towards the end, basically, I also started my weekly conversation lessons. I talk about it in this video. And of course, the speaking practice helped me a great deal uh, with vocab and listening comprehension and grammar. So this is, of course, important to mention. And I did a lot of immersion. I think that's a key takeaway from this video. I haven't used that many resources uh, for N3 level specifically for the GRPT. For me, it was really about being immersed in the language at that specific stage of my learning and understanding it more and more. But I wasn't exactly uh, focused on what I needed to know for the N3 level, if that makes sense. Because the N3 level of the GRPT, it's such a general level. It's like between beginner and intermediate, I would say. So you're starting to really grasp more of the language and yet you're not really at that stage where you're comfortable. It's really this in-between to counter this feeling that I had of being in between and not quite there. I did a lot of immersion, so you know, it's very important for me to mention it to you. I watched a ton of YouTube videos at that stage, uh, Japanese dramas, shows, movies, anything I could get my hands on, I would watch or listen to. And of course, all the while, I was still using my trusty app, Yomiwa. It's this dictionary app I have on my phone, and I can't shut up about it because I really like it. It's, it does a wonderful job for me. I've been using it since the start of my Japanese studies. And so, of course, I use it to look up any word I don't know, any kanji I don't know. I also use it to actually store my personal vocab list. And so I've been doing so since pretty much day one so yeah very grateful towards this app as well 
that's it guys i hope you enjoyed the video and i will see you next week for another one bye matane